Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are gonna be learning how to use Python for your financial statement analysis. And so you might be asking yourself, why would I want to learn how to use Python for this? And the number one answer is automation. Let's think about this. You're trying to you know, make graphs of cash and accounts receivable and accounts payable, or maybe you're trying to make ratios and you're trying to do that for all of the stocks that you own in your portfolio using the financial statements. Well, if you're using just Excel, that is going to be extremely labor intensive because that's kind of how Excel is. You have to, you know, click the cells you want to make the graph on, or you have to click the cells that you want to make like a division to do ratios. That's very, very labor intensive. And if you're doing that for like 15 stocks, that's going to take a long time. And so the solution to fixing that is by using code because by doing code, we can basically just take in that financial statement data, put it into Python and it will run all of these things that we would have had to do manually. It will do it all on its own by itself and it will save you so much time. So that is what we are gonna be doing today and that's what we're gonna be doing in this new video series. We're gonna be looking at how to use code to help your financial statement analysis. And so today's video is just going to be simply taking that Excel data and putting it into Python. So a few things before we get started with the video. Number one is that this code is not entirely my own. So when I was doing research on how to use code for financial statement analysis, I came across the YouTuber Taewoo Kim. And he had this really great and informative video series on value investing using Python. But the issue is, is that the last video that he posted on this was two years ago. So when I was using his code to do financial statement analysis, I was coming into a bunch of errors just because some of the things that he did are no, now no longer supported by Python. So I had to spend a couple extra hours going through forums, going through different coding forms, stuff like that, just to find out what the new improved code should be. So this video and this first video, maybe the second one are gonna be basically the same thing that he posted, except there are gonna be some updates to reflect the, um, just the new updates in coding, because again, his last video was posted two years ago. So that brings me to my second point, and it is that I am no coding expert, and I may not have the best explanations as to what exactly something is doing, especially in the initial cleaning process. So if you are confused by anything that I'm saying, check out Taewoo's videos because they are very, very informative. Another thing that I wanna say is that I do expect you to have some sort of coding experience when watching this video. So if you have no idea what Anaconda is and you have no idea what Jupyter Notebook is, stop this video right now, go watch Taewoo's videos on it because he has a great video on how to download Anaconda and how to start Jupyter Notebook. So use that. Lastly, I wanna say that in coding, there is a very popular term, which is garbage in equals garbage out. And so the work that you're gonna get from this code is only as good as what you put in. So what I wanna say is that the code that I'm showing you is really only applicable to the data that I'm using. And I'm using Simfin for my data, so if you don't know how to get Simfin financial statement data, go watch this video that I made earlier. But the biggest thing is that if you take financial statement data from other sources and you try and run it in this code, there's a good chance it's not going to work. So before you message me or leave a comment saying the code doesn't work on something that isn't the data that I am using and the format of the data that I'm using, make sure to tweak the data some to fit what you need to do. All right, everyone, let us now jump into the code. All right, everyone, so to give you an idea of what we're gonna be doing, the first thing that we need to do is download the Simfin data. So I'm using the standardized data. So what we have to do is we're gonna take this Excel format that we have, and we're gonna turn it into something that looks kind of like this. And so here is the steps and here is the code. And I have all the code in the comments if you just wanna drag and drop it too. So step one, understand the data that we're gonna be using. So just get a good read for the format, right? So we download this from Simfin. So row one, we have this data provided by Simfin. That's gonna be going in. We have this profit and loss statement here, balance sheet. As we can see, all of our financial statements are on one sheet in Excel. So just get a good feel for what we have going on here. The next step is that we need to install what we need. So if we're trying to use this Excel data, we need to have some sort of data structure language going on. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna install pandas. So the code is gonna just be conda install pandas. And if you have anaconda, it should already be there. So you should just get a message that says, you know, it's already installed. So that's just fine, that's good. And then last thing we're gonna do is do import pandas as PD. 
it should run and we're good to go. We have pandas in ready to use. The next thing is that we're gonna bring in our Excel data. So here is the code for it. We're gonna name the variable df and it's gonna be df equals pd.readExcel. And then we need to find where on our computer that spreadsheet is. As you can see, I have it on my desktop in a folder and here is the file name. And I'm gonna do just a brief cleaning on that. I'm gonna say df.dropNA. All right, so the next step, what I'm gonna to wanna to do next right here is I want to separate up the profit and loss statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. And for what we're gonna be reviewing for today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do the profit and loss statement but again, the balance sheet, the cash flow are basically almost identical. So if you understand what we're doing for the profit and loss statement, you'll understand the other ones just fine. And I have the code for them down below, like I said. So first thing we wanna do is find exactly where in this imported Excel, where is our headers? And so what we're gonna say is we're gonna use this, this profit and loss statement, this balance sheet, this cash flow statement as basically our dividers to say, where exactly the profit and loss statement is, where the balance sheet is. So that's kind of what we're doing. So first thing we need to do is we need to find where that is. So I'm gonna say, all right, we're gonna name the variable index underscore PL, and I'm gonna locate where the profit and loss statement is in here. Now, as you can see, my result was a one because our profit and loss statement was in this one row right here. So there we go. I located it and I also ran the same thing and I located all of the other financial statements. All right, so now that I located them all, I wanna make just my profit and loss statement. So if we look here, what I want is I want this. I want this. Nothing more because all this, you know, balance sheet, that's all balance sheet. I want this area. So what exactly am I going to have to do? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, let's locate where our profit and loss statement is and where our balance sheet is. Because as you know, the profit and loss statement is kind of this area between you know the beginning and the balance sheet. So my first code says dfpl equals df dot locate index to index balance sheet. So I'm saying, all right, we're pooling all of this stuff from here down to the balance sheet. And then at the end of it, I say negative two comma one. And what that means is that, as so you can see, I don't want these last couple of things. So that negative two is getting rid of these last two rows. And that one is getting rid of that one right here. So what pulls in is just this area and all the way to the right. And as you can see, this is what was pulled in, exactly that. Now, the next thing that I noticed with this data is that I don't want this unnamed one, unnamed two crap. As you know, my header should be the fiscal years. So what I do is I say df underscore pl dot columns. So I'm gonna be fixing the columns. And I say we're gonna df underscore PL dot I locate zero. And what that means is that we're just basically gonna say these are our new column headers here. So that's what exactly happened. So, so far we're looking really good. However, I don't want these random numbers off to the side. So that's my next set of code is I'm gonna say, we're gonna basically make the index, this row or this column of the in million USD column right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say DF underscore PL dot set the index. And I'm gonna say, we want that in million USD column. And I'm gonna say in place true to so just overwrite that data. And as you can see here, it gets rid of those random arrays of numbers. This looks really good. However, I noticed that I have these NA values inside of my financial statements. So what I wanna do is I wanna say, we're gonna fill the NAs with zero in place true. So overwrite it. As you can see here, those zeros are now overwritten or those NAs are now overwritten to zero. So I really like how this looks. However, I don't like how I have this in million USD fiscal year 08. I don't like how there's like a copy of it right there. It's duplicate. So what I'm just gonna do is say df underscore PL equals df underscore PL one colon. And that is going to get rid of that right there. And there we go, it's now gone. And that is the final version of my profit and loss statement. And here is the code for the balance sheet and here is the code for the cash flow. As you can see, they all look really good. I kept in here, I kept this zero value of assets that we see in the original for like the balance sheet, just because I like that it's a good little um, visual in my mind, like a visual divider. So I just kept that in, but that's just me. And then one difference in this balance sheet is that we did a negative three for some reason. I don't know why, but when we do that negative two, it just like, pulls in a zero, which again, is kind of odd just because with the liabilities and equity right here, 
there's only a two difference but you know I'm not really quite sure what's going on there maybe something different when I pulled in the data just again that's why you need to understand your data and always check when you're doing all of these things that's why I did everything one by one all right everyone that is how you get that excel data into python so i hope you found it helpful if you don't understand some of these things that we did especially with all of this data cleaning stuff going on please 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 check out taewoo's original videos on it because he did a very in-depth look into what exactly is happening in this data cleansing and i have that linked down below it was video number four of his series all right, have a great rest of your day. I will see you next week for making some graphs. Peace.